Good morning, saints, and welcome to worship here in the historic sanctuary of the First Congregational Church of Kalamazoo. We're a member church in the United Church of Christ, and every Sunday we affirm that no matter who you are and no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. My name is Nathan Dannison. I'm one of the pastors of our church. I want to begin by welcoming a special sermon today from our own Maggie Lekin. We're so delighted to have you preaching for us this Sunday. A couple of quick announcements before we continue. Just a quick reminder to fill out your connection card. There's a link to the connection card form in the email that Polly sent you with today's service bulletin. Also, please feel free to comment on these videos on this service together. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know how you're feeling and let us know how we can reach out and continue to be part of each other's journey. This is the fourth Sunday in Advent, a deeply holy season. And as we prepare to welcome the one who brings peace into the world, let us begin by welcoming him into our own hearts. Kindred, the peace of Christ be with you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Carrie Bellin, a member of the Chancel Choir. Please join me in the call to worship. The angels speak, and the time is nearly upon us. Breathless, there is so much to be done. God's still, small voice speaks. Our spirits calm. Eyes closed, hearts open, minds unfurled. God's love descends.
Friends, our Savior tells us that when we welcome the stranger, we welcome him. Well, Auntie Sahida is no longer a stranger to us, but we continue to provide her with sanctuary as a part of our Christian witness and as a way of honoring Jesus Christ and his teachings. And every week we pray a special prayer when we're together or when we're alone for her and for all those who need sanctuary. Please pray with me. God, eternal refuge, we humbly ask that you protect your precious daughter, Sahida Nadim, in her time of struggle. Protect her from those who seek to do her harm. Give her strength and courage during the day and rest and peace during the night. Strengthen the spirit of all of your children in the city of Kalamazoo. Make them one people for the sake of the poor, the wanderer, the immigrant, and all those seeking refuge in this difficult day. Amen. Light the Advent candle for think of joy forevermore. Christ child in a stable born, gift of love that Christmas born. On this fourth week of Advent, we light all four candles and we have a chance to meditate on love. Who do you know who loves you? How do you know that they love you? I have family members and friends who I know love me. I know because they tell me but I know even more clearly because they show me that they love me by taking care of me when I am sad or sick, by doing thoughtful things, by giving me things that they know that I like, by giving me a hug when I need it. I wonder how we know that God loves us. How does God show love to our world and to individual people in it? There's a wise person who once said, that justice is what love looks like in public. That kind of connects to our idea about peace, doesn't it? If peace is making sure that everyone has enough to live a healthy and happy life, then love is making sure that our world is just, that people are treated like the full, beloved human beings that they are in every moment of their lives. I think one of the ways that we can see God's love at work in the world is in the people who are working for justice. Here in Kalamazoo and all over the place. I hope that you will have a chance this week to talk as a family about what love means to you, how you experience it, how you show your love, and how you know that God loves you. Our blessing for this week is about love. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Help us show our love for you by loving one another well. Amen. Christmas morn, candle, candle burning bright, shining in the cold wind.
reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. I am reading from the Inclusive Bible, so it may look slightly different from the version you have in front of you. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you, my Savior. For you have looked with favor upon your lowly servant, and from this day forward all generations will call me blessed. For you, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. Your mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear you. You have shown strength with your arm. You have scattered the proud in their conceit. You have deposed the mighty from their thrones and raised the lowly to high places. You have filled the hungry with good things, while you have sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of Israel and your servant, mindful of your mercy, the promise you made to our ancestors, to Sarah and Abraham and their descendants forever. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. A few months ago, Pastor Nathan reached out to me about a great opportunity. He had a friend who was working on a handbook that would help youth preachers and their mentors prepare a sermon to use in a congregational setting. Pastor Nathan thought that I might be interested in testing that out with one of our youth. And so I reached out to one of our high school seniors, Maggie Leckin, who was eager to take on this opportunity. She and I are one pair out of about a dozen pairs who have been testing out this manual prior to its publication. We've been meeting together for the last two months, working through the chapters of the handbook and preparing a sermon for this Sunday. It has been a delightful process for both of us, a welcome distraction from some of the challenges of the coronavirus. We have practiced safety both with the coronavirus and in our safe church policies by meeting with masks and socially distanced and always in public with other adults present. And I am delighted that this morning I get to welcome Maggie Leckin to give us a sermon as a guest preacher. I will let Maggie introduce herself. Hi, I'm Maggie Leckin. Um, I'm 17 and I'm a senior at Kalamazoo Central High School. I have gone to this church for as long as I can remember and I am currently looking at colleges to go and study something along the lines of chemistry. Last year I reached a point where I bit off a bit more than I could chew. This includes, but is not limited to, the school play, trumpet lessons, two AP classes, National Honor Society, two solo and ensemble pieces, mentoring and volunteering at Indian Prairie. Acting with my friends, seeing improvements in my playing and learning new topics felt so rewarding. I was able to take part in everything I enjoyed, seeing my growth. But as a result, my days were scheduled down to the minute and time to myself or with friends usually weren't in them. I was doing so many things that I had signed up for, but I wasn't happy. I felt completely alone without constantly talking to my friends and seeing them, but I struggled to find the time. Filling up gaps with phone calls or quick visits, I was able to see people and talk to them about what was happening in my life and my concerns with my workload. While they agreed that I should not put as much on my plate, (laughs) they helped me. They assured me that I would be able to make it through and offered help when I needed it. I started to enjoy what I was doing again. I was able to find time between rehearsals to talk with friends, tell them what was worrying me, and share excitement for what my work was building up to. All ended with a successful show, some of my best grades, and some new medals. This time in my life, 
is probably the closest I have come to feeling how Mary felt on her way to visit Elizabeth. She was young, around 14 years old, three years younger than I am now, and alone, scared of what was to come, and with no support until she talked with Elizabeth. Her mood shifted greatly with assurance that her pregnancy was good news. She was able to find joy in her situation rather than sorrow, seeing herself as blessed rather than cursed. For you have looked with favor upon your lowly servant, and from this day forward, all generations will call me blessed. Mary talks about herself being blessed, but speaks more about God and God's fight for what is right in the second half of the Magnificat. When she looks beyond her own situation, Mary speaks of what God has done for the people, for the poor. There is so much power behind Mary's words that people have felt threatened by the song. In the last hundred years, the Magnificat has been banned in three countries, India, Guatemala, and Argentina. The words of this section have been used by poor Guatemalan citizens and the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo to inspire hope for change and bring people together. God has done good, the kind of good we aspire to do. You have scattered the proud in their conceit you have deposed the mighty from their thrones. A good example of this line would be someone currently in power who will be leaving their position soon. America is no stranger to the abuse of government powers by leaders, and the people have fought to stop this and hold them accountable for their actions. This was seen in the 2020 election, where the people spoke, voted, and fought for who they wanted, and were able to bring someone else into office. Many other countries have seen the cycle of power where it ends up being abused by the leaders. I'm currently learning about Russia in my comparative government class, and I saw this cycle happen multiple times with different leaders. While these fights against the powerful were more violent than the American example, they hold the same sentiment and what the people fought for. God has taught us to love those around us and fight for love and fight for those in need. To have this, we need to have people in power fighting for those as well. Throughout the world, there are many areas where we could put our energy. The Black Lives Matter movement rose in prevalence this summer, but the fight for equality is far from over, especially in America. Gun violence continues to be an issue, especially in our city of Kalamazoo. Many people are struggling due to the pandemic, whether it be financially or otherwise. There has and will be improvements as people exercise their right to vote and put good people into positions of power. Even if it does not seem like there is much you can do, there are safe ways that you can help in Kalamazoo. Our politicians represent us and our fights. Write to our representatives. Express the need for legislation to protect equality. Racism is a very systematic issue that requires changes in the system. I love Kalamazoo for its diverse and loving community. We need to do all that we can to protect our neighbors as they face discrimination and violence in our world. Do what you can to help those in need. December is often the time we feel the need to give. Things like donating to loaves and fishes or clothes drives. Remember that help is still needed past the holidays and small contributions, no matter how small, are helpful. Improvement is possible and we can help bring it to Kalamazoo. Be safe, do what you can for your community and make it better for everyone in it. We are not alone. God fights beside us as we work to make changes in Kalamazoo and beyond. Please join me as we pray together the prayer of our church. God of light and of love, be with us all. As we encounter Mary and hear the wondrous news she has received, remind us that we, like Mary, are called to be the bearer of your good news. And with that news, open our hearts and our spirits to receive with great joy the love that you have for each of us. May we all sing of the hope, peace, joy, and love that Christ brings to a hurting world. And it is in Christ's name we pray. With the confidence of children, please join with me praying as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christmas is a season when we remember what is truly good and important in our lives together. Right now, your church staff and leadership are working hard to prepare us for our journey next year, to come back together once more and to see what mission and ministry God has in store for us in this new world. We cannot do that without your pledges. We need to be able to provision our ship well for this journey. So I want to ask you again to please fill out your pledge card and return it to the church as soon as you're able. If you need any help, just send us an email at info at kazoofcc.org. Reach out to church staff and we'll help. Please give as generously as you're able. And even if you need to take a sabbatical this year from giving, we understand. Just let us know. That way we can continue to build up this great living temple into something that continues to change and save lives here in Kalamazoo and across the globe. Thank you.
Friends, let us now be part of that great mission that overcomes the darkness with the light of Christmas joy. We're all bound up in this thing together. And so this week, let's be courageous. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord your God. Amen.